चैप्टर नाइन द गोल्डन एज गुप्ता एम्पायर इंडिया ड्यूरिंग द गुप्ता एम्पायर वॉज मार्क्ड बाय ग्रेट प्रोग्रेस इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी द टेस्टिमनी ऑफ दिस लाइज इन द एडवांसमेंट अचीव्ड इन मेटलर्जी ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड क्लोज टू द कुतुब मीनार एट मेहरौली इन डेली is the iron pillar dating back to the 4th century CE it has stood for more than 1600 years without rusting the golden age under the gupta empire also saw the appearance of coins made of gold in large numbers After the decline of the Mauryan Empire, the Kushanas in the north and the Shatvahanas in the Deccan region ruled over two of the largest kingdoms in the Indian subcontinent. After their decline, there was a period of political chaos. the two larger kingdoms split into several smaller kingdoms in the beginning of the 4th century ce these kingdoms were again united under the rule of the gupta dynasty the gupta empire was one of the largest political and military empires in ancient india the gupta kings ruled between the 4th and 5th centuries ce over most of northern india most of the information about the gupta dynasty is derived from coins inscriptions monuments and Kalidasa's Sanskrit classics Rise of the Guptas The Gupta rulers were great conquerors and administrators They defended the country from foreign infiltrators such as the Shakas and the Hunas Let us find out about how the various gupta kings conquered different parts of northern and central india and consolidated the empire chandragupta first chandragupta first was the first important ruler of the gupta dynasty He succeeded his father Ghatotkach in 319 CE. Chandragupta married Kumara Devi, a princess of Lichavi tribe, a powerful tribe with political control over the regions near Magadha. He received Magadha with its capital city Pataliputra as part of his dowry. With the help of the Lichavis, Chandragupta conquered a number of surrounding territories. His kingdom included area of modern Bihar and parts of the Uttar Pradesh and Bengal He assumed the title of Maharaja Dhiraja Chandragupta I was succeeded by his son Samudragupta in 335 CE He is considered to be one of the many great military geniuses 
in Indian history and is also referred to as the Napoleon of India. One of the most important sources of information on Samudra Gupta's reign is an inscription engraved on a stone pillar at Allahabad known as Prayaga Prashasti. It was written in Sanskrit by his court poet Harishena. Conquests of Samudra Gupta The beginning of Samudra Gupta's reign was marked by the defeat of his immediate neighbors. His conquests extended the Gupta empire over the Ganga Yamuna valley up to Mathura. Empowered by his new conquests, Samudra Gupta began a campaign against the kingdoms in the south along the Bay of Bengal and reached as far as Kachi or Kachipuram. In South India, Samudra Gupta did not annex the subdued territories but allowed them to rule as tributary kings. Samudra Gupta had realized that without proper transport and communication it would be difficult to control the southern states. His direct rule extended over most of northern India with the exception of Kashmir, western Punjab, parts of Rajasthan, Sindh and Gujarat. Samudra Gupta issued eight different types of coin, most of them in gold. He was also a patron of learning a celebrated poet and a musician. Several coins depict him playing the veena. He patronized poets and scholars of Sanskrit literature. Though he followed the Hindu religion, he was tolerant towards other religions. He granted permission to the king of Sri Lanka to build a Buddhist temple in Gaya. Samudra Gupta was succeeded by Chandra Gupta II. Chandra Gupta II Chandragupta II or Vikramaditya was one of the most powerful kings of ancient India. He ruled from 380 to 412 CE. During this time, the Gupta Empire reached its zenith. His greatest victory was over the Shaka Shatrupas with the annexation of their kingdom in Gujarat. This gave the Gupta Empire control over the sea ports of the western coast and helped in developing a large network of trade overseas. Chandragupta II controlled a vast empire which extended from the Ganga to the Indus and from North Pakistan to the Narmada. Chandragupta II was a great patron of literature and numerous scholars adorned his court, the most prominent being the legendary Kalidasa. Accounts of Fa Xin Fa Xin, a Chinese pilgrim, visited India during the reign of Chandragupta II. He gave a general description of North India at that time. Fa Xin described people as honest, prosperous and happy 
corporal punishments were also rare later guptas chandragupta second was succeeded by kumar gupta first sakand gupta the later successor is generally considered the last of the great gupta rulers he defeated the hunas as the latter attempted to invade india from the northwest sakand gupta's successors were weak rulers they were unable to protect the empire from continuous huna attacks by the middle of the 5th century ce the extent of the gupta empire had decreased considerably many independent rulers established powerful kingdoms these kingdoms were constantly at war with each other rule of the guptas the gupta kings were able administrators and great patrons of literature art and architecture therefore great strides were made in the fields of culture and science during this period this has led many historians to describe the gupta age as a golden age in indian history however one must remember that these developments were restricted only to northern india moreover many other periods in india his in indian history have witnessed numerous wonderful achievements as well administration the guptas had a strong central government but they also allowed a certain degree of local control the king was at the head of the administrative system the empire was divided into provinces which were subdivided into districts or vishayas headed by vishyapatis councils in each district helped the vishyapatis in administration members of the royal family were appointed as governors of provinces and were assisted by officials called kumara matyas the gupta system of urban and rural administration was based on the principle of encouraging as much of local participation as possible economy agriculture continued to be the main occupation but there was significant progress in industry and trade one of the most important industries was the textile industry silk silk muslin calico linen wool and cotton were produced in large quantities other important industries were pottery making ivory work stone cutting carving and metal works especially 
in gold silver copper and bronze pearls precious stones such as jade and quartz were exported to foreign lands sea trade had developed significantly by this period there was brisk sea trade with the countries in western asia southeast asia africa and some mediterranean countries education the gupta period was known for the importance that was given to education the guptas founded and patronized several universities of higher learning subjects such as medicine astronomy philosophy vedic literature and grammar were given importance religion the gupta kings were worshippers of lord vishnu therefore they were also known as vaishnavas the concept of 10 of avatars or incarnations of vishnu evolved during this period the gupta performed sacrifices such as the ashwamedha yajna many of the gupta rulers were tolerant towards other religions for instance the buddhist university of nalanda was patronized by gupta kings science there was great progress made in science during the gupta age advances were made in the field of ayurvedic medicine aryabhatta a great mathematician and astronomer wrote the aryabhatiya he calculated the value of pi moreover he discussed the rotation and revolution of the earth and the causes for lunar and solar eclipses the decimal system gave the world a counting system development in literature sanskrit literature owes much to the gupta rulers who patronized this language the greatest among the scholars was kalidasa who wrote the lyrical poem meghduta and great dramas such as abhijan shakuntalam many of the early puranas were written down during the gupta period the panchatantra was compiled by vishnu sharman marichakatika a drama was written by shudraka the mahabharata was almost completed by 4th century ce art and architecture During the Gupta period most sculptures focused on spiritual themes and religious figures such as the Buddha Vishnu and Shiva the statues were life like and beautiful The Dashavatara temple at Devgarh is a fine example of Gupta architecture the roof and pillars of the temple were artistically decorated with fine sculptures and exquisitely carved designs 
Buddhist chaityas in Ajanta caves were also made during the Gupta period. Painting The most famous paintings of this period are the cave paintings at Ajanta. These paintings are known as frescoes. The colors of these paintings look fresh even today. Though the Gupta Empire started declining by the 5th century CE, its contribution in the field of art and architecture literature and science was unparalleled political stability was ensured with a powerful and strong government this political stability also contributed to the economic prosperity to the kingdom thank you